Howdy to Eric Arnold, Monday evening, the 23rd of May, and this is an episode of Eric Arnold's Politics Barn. I've been threatening to make this episode my adventures as a poll worker. I elected myself as the majority inspector in my local precinct. How'd you do that? Well, you, if, if you pay attention when you vote, there's all kinds of positions listed there, and half of them are vacant. In other words, no one's running for the position. So you just write your name in, and you know, next thing you know, you're elected to something. So that's more or less what I did. Why did I do such a thing? Um, I don't know. I, it mainly is I wanted to see the process behind the scenes. I thought this will enable me to have access to what goes on in these poll places and I can see for myself much quicker what the process is rather than asking questions of people that think they know but really don't and I'm getting half the information. If I'm actually on the ground floor, I'll be able to determine, mainly what I'm trying to determine is, is cheating possible? Is it possible to steal these elections? Um, everyone on the Republican side, led by our esteemed leader, the MAGA king, Donald Trump, believes the election was stolen. I believe there was cheating that went on. I'm not so sure the election was stolen, per se. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I think it's a very good chance he would have lost anyway. Uh, that, you know, the, for example, if you had missed by 2,000 mules review, uh, the 2,000 mule documentary, I think establishes pretty conclusively there was ballot harvesting going on in areas where ballot harvesting was illegal. However, ballot harvesting often is simply the accumulation of legal votes. Um, now, why an illegal means in this case, in other words, you're not allowed to ballot harvest in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think it's legal in California, but you're not allowed to go around and have one guy just accumulate a bunch of votes from a bunch of voters and bring them all in himself. That's not allowed here. So, however, it happened. I'm certain watching that 2000 Mule documentary, I'm convinced that the ballot harvesting went on in the city of Philadelphia. But that doesn't mean those votes they gathered weren't from real voters. <laughs> so what's the remedy? You know, you're going to invalidate a quarter of the votes in the city of Philadelphia because they were accumulated by illegal means. The courts aren't going to do that. They've made that pretty clear. I'm not even sure that should be the remedy. Um, it, it is annoying though. I know I get it. You know, in other words, there are all these rules here that say you got to do this. You got to let poll watchers in. They got to be able to observe the process. They got to see what's going on. There's no ballot harvesting and the Democrats violate every last one of them and nothing ever happens to them. So, you know, where, where's the justice? Where's the Where's the punishment for violating these rules? Well, right now, it certainly doesn't appear that there is any. At any rate, so I want to get on the ground floor and find out if you can cheat or not. So, went in, did my little thing for the primary almost a week ago. And uh, uh, if you're not following this real closely, we still don't have a winner. Donald Trump is right about that. Our process, largely created by our idiot rulers in Harrisburg, our Democrat overlords, is ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous, but then they want it to be that way. How you can vote a week ago, and you still don't know who won. You know, we're not building rockets here. We're counting votes. This is not rocket science. We're simply counting votes. It's been a week, and we still don't have a winner. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Simple people look at that and go, well, it's corrupt. And they're right. It's corrupt as a $3 bill. 
that you can't count these votes in a week's time. Ludicrous. It's corrupt as a $3 bill. So, but this is a system we have at the moment. So, what was my experience? Well, I'll say this. Let's say, let me give you, I don't want to make this video. I did this video once already. It was 50 minutes long and the microphone didn't work. So, take two. Let's cut it down to hopefully half an hour. There's five people, in, the, in my little precinct, there was 1,148 registered voters. We, we have a book. Uh, it was supposed to be electronic. The electronic poll book didn't work. We had to throw, move that out, just turn it off, throw it away. Use the paper book where we got 1,100 names in there with addresses, uh, birth dates, signatures, 1,148 names. That's total, both parties. And in Pennsylvania, it's closed primary. In other words, Democrats are only allowed to vote in the Democrat Party uh, primary. Republicans are only allowed to vote in the Republican primary. And if you're an independent, you're screwed. There's nothing to vote for. You're not allowed to vote. So only Democrats and Republicans can participate. Is that good topic for another video? Uh, so... We had five people running our little precinct. I was, I'm going to call myself second in command. I don't know if there was a real hierarchy there, except the judge of elections, that woman, she was supposedly in charge. I think she was in charge, not supposedly. She was in charge. She was the judge of elections. And then I'm the majority inspector. Uh, now, I'm not even sure what that means, frankly, because when I elected myself, I was a libertarian. <laughs> that was my party when I elected myself. And libertarians aren't in the majority of anything. So I, I don't know what this means. I'm the majority inspector. I think that just means I got the most votes. Uh, I got two, two votes. Uh, I wrote my name in, and then unbeknownst to me, my wife wrote my name in too, without speaking to me either. That was kind of an odd coincidence. Um, so, at any rate, um, my two votes outranked perhaps the others that had one vote. So, I'm the majority uh, inspector. Then there's a minority inspector, which is supposed to be a different party than I am. Now, I changed parties from Libertarian to Republican so I could vote. As I just told you, if I was a Libertarian, I couldn't participate. Uh, so I wanted to vote in this primary, so I had to become a Republican so I could vote in the Republican primary. Uh, so there's supposed to be the minority inspector, supposedly, of a different party than I am. And then we had a machine inspector uh, that was... I'm not even sure what her... She was given the keys to the voting machines, and she was, uh, I think, the one that would, like, turn the machine on in the morning and, and run a report, and then she would turn the machine off and then at night when it was over, and, and she would push the button to generate a report. Uh, she was the one we said, hey, the paper jammed, and then she would come over and do whatever she did to fix it. I guess she went to the machine inspector training course, uh, come to think of it, I did too. So I don't know. But, and then lastly, there's a clerk. So five people in the polling location working the polls. Now, did we need all that many? Probably not. If we had a simpler system without these stupid computers that all they do is make things more complicated, we probably could have gotten away with three. But it, it, let's put it this way if we, in the general election in November, when we're probably going to have 800 people come through there to vote, yeah, we probably do need all five. So we, that's what we got there. Um, now, who are these people? Well, it was me and the little old ladies. I, I got a glimpse of my future, frankly. Uh, I'm not really sure what to think of that. I, I thought, this is how it's going to be. I'm indestructible. I don't expect to die for... Well, another 50 years easily. And this is how it's going to go. All my male friends are going to be dead. And there's going to be nothing but little old ladies around me. 
and uh, talking about whatever little old ladies talk about, and uh, uh huh. <laughs> so it was a glimpse of my future. Now, as far as were the how many Democrats were there? As I said, they're supposed to have uh, the minority inspector is supposed to be a Democrat. Well, there weren't any. They were. We were all Republicans. All Republicans. Now, how does that happen? I don't think it, they're able to be choosy. Let's put it that way. In that the county election office in Reading, they get who they get. In other words, I told you these positions are elected. Well, most of them are vacant. Nobody wants to do this sort of thing, even though we do get paid a pittance of, you know, basically we get paid $15 an hour. Uh, so it's not totally nothing, but you know, for the most part, most, no one wants to get involved. So most of these positions are vacant. So they get whoever they can get. Um, oftentimes, if the position is vacant, even after the election, in other words, they had the election to elect the poll workers and nobody signed up, then they just try to get volunteers. If they can find somebody, anybody that wants to do it and they have a vacancy, he's like, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then they might go, all right, well, um, then they might you know, try to mix and match. In other words, if I sign up, after the fact that I'm a Republican, and I go, I'll do it, they'll say, all right, well, do you have a problem being the minority inspector in uh, Reading uh, uh, Ward 8-1, you know, which is a heavily Democrat ward, where there are no Republicans in 8-1, so you know, they'll drop me in there to be the Republican amongst all the Democrats. Uh, and I would probably go, I guess, sure, why not? Um, so uh, uh, that's how they might get a Democrat in here or there or a Republican in, in there. But in my polling place, all Republicans, all Republicans. So, you know, I know now that one talking point I heard at the conclusion of the 2020 election that the Democrats were saying from Philadelphia, well, that's ridiculous that uh, there's a Republican in every precinct. There's, by law, there must be a Republican in every precinct. There has to be a minority inspector. So to say that they're running up the vote and cheating is ridiculous because the Republicans have somebody in every precinct. Lie, not true, bullshit, simply not true. It's supposed to be that way, but it simply isn't. It simply isn't. Um, so they, you get who you get. You get whoever volunteers or signs up or elects themselves. That's who's there. So we get all Republicans. And really, I don't know if that's unusual or what, but my little precinct is probably 65, 35 Republican. That's not that skewed. You know what I mean? In other words, it's not 90, 10. It's 30, uh, 65, 35. So... I don't know it's unusual that you get all of one party in a precinct. Uh, so we had all one party. And let me tell you, um, you know, I kept my cards pretty close to the vest because oh, this is all new to me. I'm new. I, I don't know how this works. I haven't been there before, haven't done it before. Uh, the little old ladies, I would say, had, for the most part, all done it at least once. All of them. I was the only newbie. Uh, so I kept my cards close to my vest. But after a few hours, it became pretty apparent to me that these little old ladies are ready to throw the Democrat Party and Joe Biden in the ocean. <laughs> I mean, I thought, damn, I thought I'd be the radical here. And whoa, these people are have had it with the way things are going right now. Um uh, and these are women, too. You know, the, the, you would think the GOP women are not the uh, ones carrying, you know, this here. They're not the ones. They're not the ones with the freaking pitchfork ready to do whatever you do with the pitchfork. I guess you throw a bale of hay in the attic. Uh, that's what you do with the pitchfork. But, man, they were, 
They were not happy. The voters themselves were not happy. I mean, you could, it was palpable, palpable, palpable. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, some people would just out and out just say it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. They, uh, and then some people would, I mean, the one guy came in there. I thought, wow, I'm going to vote you most likely to attend an insurrection. He's got his red, white, and blue pants on. He's got his trumping shirt on. Um, <laughs> I mean, these people were waiting for this day. So I thought, man, I don't know. These people are ready. They're ready for today, and I think they're going to be ready in November. Now, can you cheat? Um, I don't know. There's, I saw some definite holes where maybe it's possible to cheat. Um, the votes go into a counter. You know, basically, we give them a blank piece of paper. It's like a skinny, it's not a full eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It's about that length, but it's half of that. Maybe not even half of that. A ballot, a strip of paper like that. So we give them that. They go over to the big printer where they make their selections. The big printer prints on that piece of paper their selections along with barcodes and then they stick it in the big trash can uh, which is another voting counting machine I call it the big trash can because that's what it looks like uh, it sucks it in to the big trash can and scans those barcodes which correspond to whatever candidate they voted for in addition to that it also says verbally in English which who they voted for, i.e. Governor Doug Mastriano, Senate, um, Mehmet Oz, etc. Uh, and then votes go into the big trash can. And then at the end of the night, we push a button on the big trash can and out comes this very long ticker tape, this huge long ticker tape, probably from the width of this barn, uh, that has all the results. In other words, um, this many votes came into the trash can total. Uh, here are the races. Here's who got how many votes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we're supposed to, I think there's like four copies of that. And then we're supposed to put one of the copies posted in the window of the polling place and when we're finished. Uh, and then the others go here or there and whatnot. Um, my question there was, who opens up the trash can? We're not allowed to. We're not allowed to touch the trash can. All we're allowed to do is push that button and it spits out a report for us. My question is, how do I know that what's coming out of that printer is what's in the trash can? I.e., that scanner is just a computer program and you can program that thing to say anything. I mean, there could be 500 votes in there for Donald Trump and one vote for Joe Biden. And as long as the thing's programmed to say uh, Joe Biden got 878 votes, that's what it's going to say, regardless of what's in the trash can. So it'll, pro it'll print whatever it's programmed to print. So that's where, is it possible to hack that, the big trash can? I couldn't, you know, in other words, the poll workers couldn't. I don't think, I don't think there's anybody as a poll worker that has at the precinct level that has that kind of technical knowledge. And even if they did, then they would only be hacking their own precinct. These machines are not linked together. You know, they stand alone. They're not hooked up to the internet. I'm reasonably sure about that just because that's what they taught us in training. I have no way of really knowing. I, that's just a feel for me that that's true, that they're not linked to the cloud, that uh, Vladimir Putin isn't w w dialing in from Moscow to eastern Pennsylvania to hack our elections at the Gibraltar Fire Company. That's just a guess. Uh, I don't know it for true. Uh, but could you hack or reprogram the big trash cans. Maybe at the county level, i.e., these machines all came from somewhere. 
somebody delivered the big trash can to us the day before the election uh, that from the county seat uh, where they manage the election for each county, then they have control over, well, there'd probably be uh, upwards of four or 500 of these machines. Uh, they would have control over all of them. And possibly there you could, if you had a mind to, reprogram and uh, uh, get into the guts of that election computer and make it say something other than what the votes are in the can. I think this would be somewhat difficult. Now, uh, the simple way to prove that it's not being done that way, and I, you know, I'm not 100% if this would work just because, you know, you can just count the votes in the can. <laughs> really, that's probably what you should be doing. In other words, that's all we should have been doing anyway. The votes should have been, you know, tallied, thrown in the trash can without a computer. And then at the end of the night, we count them, which would have taken all of about 15 minutes. That's the way it should work. That's not the way it does work. We have the big trash can there that the computer counts, and we're not allowed to check the computer. We're not allowed to double check the computer. Only the county people are allowed to double check the computer. And I have no way of knowing if the county people ever do double check the computer. Uh, and even if they did double check the computer, how do we know that they're doing it honestly? In that they might have been the ones that reprogrammed the thing to begin with. So, okay, we'll spot check three of them. And, you know, all you do there then is just make sure you spot check ones you know are clean. Uh, it, oh, it's clean. You know, I won't spot check those ones over there where I know we programmed them to uh, cheat. Uh, so, I don't know. That, that could happen. Now, this is much more likely how you would cheat the system is you simply, the poll workers, I, at some point, uh, if I know my other compadres are on the same page as I am, and we all have a mind to cheat, hey, not hard. In other words, I got a book full of 1,148 names, and it's getting late in the evening, and the polls are only going to be open for another, say, hour. And I know these people haven't voted. And I may have knowledge that they're not going to vote. You know, I knew one guy right there. I saw in the poll book. It's like, I know this guy. He, he's, he's listed here in my precinct. He doesn't live here anymore. He, he lives over in Wernersville. He, he's not going to vote. You know, if I had a mind to, he could have voted. <laughs> I, all that would have taken is simply signing his name, taking a blank ballot, run it through the machine just like I was him, and dump it in the trash can. Boom! He voted. That would have been so easy. And, and there's no way to know that that was done fraudulently. Um, does that happen? I'm pretty sure that happens. I'm pretty sure that happens. Um, I don't think it would happen in our locations just because I think by nature, little old ladies are pretty cautious. And they're not going to be, you know, hanging their asses out there, uh, uh, faking votes, um, especially not in a primary, but even in a general election. It, 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 they don't know who's going, who's going to tell on them. So, the, the, I, you know, I really don't know it would happen in our type of location. Now, in Philadelphia, uh, yeah, I mean, I could certainly see that sort of thing happening. You know, it would be very easy. Like I said, everybody's of the same mindset in some of these precincts where it's 90-10, one way or the other. Mostly one way being the Democrats. It's getting that way in some of the Republican, you know, going back 20 years, the Republican pre uh, precincts would be, you know, at best 75-25. But... You know, with the Democrat Party just running to the progressive communist left anymore, the rural counties here in Pennsylvania, they're ending up now 80-20. This next cycle, they might be 85-15-90-10. It's almost even Democrats that have been Democrats for 50, 100 years 
are starting to question. It's like, wait a minute, this is not... We used to believe in unions and a uh, fair shake for the working man, not whether or not a six-year-old can be a boy or girl or whatever the hell he, wa he or she wants to be. We don't believe in that. I want a job, the guy, man or woman that's a Democrat says. So, yeah, it, it, it's when you have these kind of splits... Yeah, you can get those kind of things in these polling locations where everybody's all one party, and that's where you can get some cheating that goes on. Uh, it's not hard to do it. You just have to make sure that everyone in that room is on the same page. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of finding which people didn't vote and assigning a ballot uh, to that person and putting it in the bin. You know, you're never going to be able to generate hundreds of votes that way. But if you have hundreds of precincts where everybody's of the same mindset and I'm getting 10, 20 votes in each precinct, yeah, you can run up a couple thousand votes that way. Uh, a couple thousand votes. I bet Dave McCormick would like to have a couple thousand votes right now. He'd be the next United States Senator from the state of Pennsylvania if he had those 2,000 votes. Uh, but he doesn't. So, yeah, a thousand votes here and there, certainly tens of thousand votes can definitely make a difference. So, yeah, could it be done? Absolutely it can be done. Uh, another way you could do it is just, just do it. In other words, for example, we had, I would say, at least five different people come in that wanted to vote, and we told them they couldn't because they weren't in the book. They were not in the book, uh, and that happens every election cycle. Somebody goes there. I know of somebody, a good friend of mine, who I'm not happy with because he's from Georgia, and he didn't vote the last cycle. In the one state in the whole damn country, which controls Congress now, and he didn't vote because he wasn't registered. He, he just didn't do it. He didn't take the time to register. Not that it would have really mattered, but, you know, it was an incredibly important election. Uh, he says, well, I went down there, and they said I wasn't registered, so I couldn't vote. So I, well, whose fault's that? If it's not in the book, it's not my fault as a poll worker. I didn't write the damn book. It's on you, the voter, to figure out whether or not you're registered or not. So you got to take those extra few seconds to make sure you're registered and make sure where you're registered. If you move around a lot, where are you registered? Are you registered here? Are you registered there? Where can you vote? Uh, so those people coming in, they some of them got mad. You know, it's like, God, this is just always the Republicans get screwed. It's just... We're always the ones that are getting disenfranchised. And I almost said, hey, lady, there's five Republicans here, and if it was up to us, we'd let you vote, but we're going to get called out on it. If we let you vote, you're not in the book. We're numbering every person that comes in here. And if I turn in numbers with an extra vote in the trash can that's not in the book, Someone's going to look at that and go, that's odd, strange. They screwed up there in precinct one, two, three, four, five. Um, and if I turn in multiple ones like that, they're really going to start scratching their head, possibly. Possibly. So we weren't going to let them vote. They're not in the book. We gave them the provisional ballot, which, you know, that's another question I had. I don't know what that means. It, it mollifies the voter. Oh, I got a provisional ballot. This will be counted some other way. Actually, I don't think it will. <laughs> I don't know how those votes are counted. I don't think they are counted, frankly. In other words, how is that provisional ballot adjudicated? You turn it in to the county office, and right now somewhere they're counting these provisional ballots, uh, uh, maybe because the Senate race is essentially tied, and I don't understand why you would count it at the county office when you can't count it at the precinct level. In other words, that guy's not in the book. He's not registered. 
he filled out a, pre a provisional ballot insisting, insisting that he was registered a Republican. There's no evidence of that, none. He didn't bring in a card from Harrisburg saying he was registered. He didn't bring in a screenshot of a computer saying he was registered. He showed no evidence. There is no evidence. So when they open up his little provisional ballot, what's changed other than the fact that the guy's still not goddamn registered? So I don't know how that vote is counted, who determines whether or not it does count, when does this happen? How does this happen? I have no idea. I don't know the answer. I'm going to get the answers, though. I want to know those answers. So I will get those answers before the general election in November. But I thought when that woman was pitching a fit about her 18 and 19-year-old sons who were not registered, I thought, you know... If this happened in Philadelphia, they'd just let them vote. They would just give them a ballot and send them over there to the machine, and they would vote, and those votes would go in the trash can. And you're saying, well, what about the book? They're not in the book. What are you going to do about that? They would have done nothing. They just would have done nothing. They wouldn't have matched. The numbers wouldn't have matched. There'd be like a handful of extra votes in the trash can that weren't listed in the the book in the sign-in sheet, it's like, wait a minute, we got 300 names here in the sign-in sheet and in the book, and we got 305 votes. What the hell? This is, and that's about as far as it would have gone. There's not going to be an investigation. They're not calling their lawyers. They're not calling the state police because there's an extra five votes in the trash can. They simply would have chalked it up to human error, crazy shit happens, we don't know what happened, it was busy, that guy was complaining, the lady threw up in the corner, who knows? They wouldn't have done anything. And I think that happens a lot in some of these precincts where they just go, all right, you want to vote, vote, go ahead, I'm not going to stop you. I know this, as far as the signature matching, that's like one of my roles. I'm supposed to match signatures. <sighs> there wasn't a hell of a lot of matching going on. I, I One, I was new. So I'm just trying to get the procedure down. And I'm trying to get through people in and out of there as quick as possible so they can go on about their day. I wasn't going to bust somebody's balls because the signature didn't match. Uh, probably somebody that's lived in the township for 30 years and say, your signature doesn't match. <laughs> I mean, what would be the point? <coughs> <coughs> I mean, I think you could probably force them to show an ID if you do that. Uh, I'm not allowed to ask for ID, not in Pennsylvania. The only time I'm allowed to ask for ID is if they're new to the precinct. Then I'm required to ask them for ID. But other than that, I'm not allowed to ask for the ID. Now, if the signatures don't match, I guess I could just say, well, the signature doesn't match. Can you try again? And, and then they'll just basically, at, at some point, you know, morph it into... You know, they see the signature I'm looking at as to, hey, uh, okay, he says that my signature doesn't match that. And I can kind of see why, because, all right, I'll just make it. How about that? Now that's pretty close. Okay. It, it, I, I just don't know where that goes. In other words, if you do have a totally fraudulent person walk in there who's not who he says he is, I don't know. I mean... My mindset, and I think most of the poll workers' mindset, is not looking for that fraudulent guy that we're going to catch him. I'm going to catch that guy. Our mindset is we want to get the people in there as fast as we can and get them the hell out of there so they can go on about their day. We're not looking for to be the front line of the election defense. I mean, what the hell for? I mean, in other words, it's pretty clear the rules are set up not to have any kind of defense at all. So what's the point of being that lone, uh, lone ranger hero 
uh, trying to find that signature that doesn't match. So yeah, I think it'd be pretty easy to just load up a shitload of people and just run them around to anonymous precincts and just have them be people that we suspect don't vote. Uh, I think that would be pretty easy. And I don't know that you would get caught that often. Uh, I really don't know you would get caught that often. I think that would be pretty easy. And I think you would get away with it. Because the poll worker's mindset is not to catch this kind of stuff. The, the, the people automatically shy away from confrontation. It, it makes you feel awkward, dirty. Oh my God, I can't believe he said that that signature didn't match. That poor old man, he may embarrass him. That's terrible, you know. So, yeah. Can you cheat? Absolutely, you can cheat. Uh, did I cheat? Hell no. Did it as honestly as I could. Just like the instructions said it, uh, uh, we were supposed to do it. Um, will we ever cheat? Hell no. I'm sure we won't because we're afraid of getting in trouble. And we know that the judges and the Democrats in the courts are all Democrats. So, you know, God forbid if a Republican does cheat, they'll get put under the jail. Whereas the Democrats know they control the courts, so they can do whatever they want. The only hope you have is that the, uh, uh, here in Pennsylvania, the Republicans take the governorship. Then you might get a fair shake, possibly, because then uh, uh, hopefully the governor would somewhat, well, Got to win a secretary of state position too, because that's the one that actually controls the election. So you kind of got to win them both. So if you win them both, then you might get a fair shake, uh, somewhat. Until then, you know the Democrats, for the most part, control these elections. So we just got to turn the votes out. We got to turn the votes out in a massive number, and I think we will this next cycle. In the midterms, I don't think it's going to be close particularly. I think we're going to turn out at so many people to vote against this progressive, socialist, whatever you want to call it, regime that's in there. I'll give you one more point to make you feel optimistic, and then I'll just shut up and uh, let you go on about your evening. Here in Berks County, well, let's see, this Berks County basically looks like that. Then we get down here, we got Chester County, and then there's Montgomery County, and down here is Delaware County, and in Berks County is my little congressional district, which is the sixth congressional district. Probably three quarters of the sixth congressional district is in Chester County. Um, however, one quarter is here in Berks County, and it's actually uh, set up uh, by the uh, Democrat courts to favor a Democrat. In other words, there's more Democrats in this uh, sixth congressional district than there are Republicans. Uh, in 2020, I believe the Democrat Congresswoman, she won about, I'm going to say 55, 45, uh, which is about um, the same percentage that Biden beat Trump 55 45 in this congressional district. I looked up the uh, precincts that are just here in Berks County in the 2021 election. The primary election was very important because we had those ballot referendums. If you remember me talking about that, those were the ones where the Republicans had gotten the constitutional ballot referendums to alter the state constitution, to limit the tyrannical powers of that son of a bitch, Tom Wolf, who was forcing us to stay inside, lose our businesses, lose our livelihoods, wear our idiotic masks for no reason. So the Republicans got those on the ballot and, and, and did very much little else to help it pass. In other words, all right, I'm tired of these people blowing up my phone. Uh, so we'll get this on the uh, ballot for the primary, and uh, it's up to the people. 
they want to strip Wolf of his powers, let them. But we're not going to help them because, frankly, we kind of like these powers. And uh, we're not going to help them. I just want the phone to stop ringing. So they got the thing on the ballot. I'll give them kudos for that, at least. Uh, and then they turned it over to us, the people. And we did it. We voted Wolf out as far as his powers go. It was about 5347. I looked at the precincts here in PA for Chrissy Houlihan. That's a congresswoman. That's my congresswoman. Um, her precincts here in PA, that she or here in Berks County, she generally carries those 5545. Um, it was reversed in that 21 election. It was reversed. 5545 against Wolf, i.e. against the lockdowns, against Houlihan. I think that's significant, uh, especially because Chester County is, is not even skewed that heavily. It's, it's 55-45 here in Berks County, Democrat, and in Chester County, it's slightly more in favor of the Republicans down there. This is where Houlihan wins her elections is here in Berks County because she's got the whole city of Reading as uh, her uh, little bail uh, uh, backyard there to generate a whole bunch of uh, re re uh, Democrat votes. Well, I think that could be changing for her. You know, it, uh, this, we voted against her in 21 by 10 points. That's unheard of. It was a 20-point swing from the 20 general election to the 21 ballot referendums. If it holds up anything like that, in November of this year, she's toast. And if she's toast, that, that you can, right away, you can uh, mark up Mehmet Oz. He'll win his election easily. Um, the governorship will be tough. That's going to be tougher because Mastriano probably is not going to get a whole lot of uh, uh, swing soccer mom votes. Uh, that's going to be, it's going to be a Trump type election. In other words, he's going to do well where he does well, and he's going to get crushed in the spongy Montgomery County, Delaware County. Uh, he'll get buried in those areas. So it'll be close for him. Uh, but I feel pretty comfortable with what I saw in the primary election that we're set up pretty well. And I don't want to be set up this well, frankly. I was thinking about that uh, when I was staring at the gas pump the other day. I was like, you know what? Huh, I'm really taking it in the teeth here to get rid of these goddamn Democrats. Well, I almost wish these prices would just come down, <laughs> that I don't have to eat it like this uh, just to get rid of these Democrats. But we've paid the price, so now our reward is just a few months away to get rid of these people who have caused this misery. There'll be more about that in upcoming episodes. Oh yeah, we're going to talk and talk and talk and talk about how you cannot vote for any kind of Democrat in this upcoming cycle. You cannot do it. Don't do it. My God, don't do it. Unless you like the way things are going. I know a lot of Democrats, they just don't link any of this stuff together. That it's all just an accident. It's all just coincidence that things are going shitty while they're in charge. Yeah, it, it, all one big coincidence. Give me a break. All right, very good. Let's talk again later. Eric Arnold signing off from the politics barn. And we'll talk again.